baby diapers. Hey guys, it's Noah. Let's pray and get into this word. It's a good one. We're in Mark 4 today. This is the conclusion of moral inventory, okay? Uh, I, I hope you guys like that little uh, that little number at the beginning. We're going to call this breaking good, okay? Instead of breaking bad, we're going to be breaking good, okay? Uh, let's pray and get into this word. Father, we come before you. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We love you. We exalt you. Speak through me from the spirit, not from the flesh. We crucify the flesh. We walk in the spirit. Bridle my tongue. I pray for wisdom on what to pray, Holy Spirit. Show me how to pray over this. I speak peace over everybody on this video, over my home. Uh, God, I pray right now, everybody suffering from jealousy would be exposed, that that's a spirit, it's not them. Bring that thing up and show them exactly the contents of their heart, where that thing's at. Don't ignore this. Don't like chalk this up as just the enemy saying this is you having jealousy within you that you've come into agreement with, okay? If you acknowledge it, God is faithful and he'll pluck that thing out, okay? That's how you get rid of this, but you got to acknowledge it. You got to acknowledge that it's there. So you take every one of those accusations, even, even if it is an accusation and it's not even true, just acknowledge it. God, if there's any of that in me, I don't want it there. Get it out. Pluck it out by the root. And that's how you do it, Okay? It doesn't matter. It's all forgiven anyways. That's what we're going to go into. Father, I lift this up to you. Help me give this piecemeal, he just said. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. Mark 4. This is kind of interesting. My wife and I were talking about this the other day. <clears throat> we were talking about like the hardest, hardest classes in college. Yes, I did go to college. I actually got like straight A's, all but like one class um, in college. Uh, my wife obviously went for eight years. I, I went for two, I'm a few credits shy of an associate's degree. It was in education. I didn't want to do that after my student teaching hours. It was horrible. Um, and I don't like school. I, it's boring. It's like, it's a facade. I, I, I feel like that's for me. Okay. It, it is for some people, right? <laughs> that being said, um, we were talking about the hardest classes that we faced and it was always the classes where the teacher did not uh, pre prep you for the test, right? They just go up there and they lecture and then they don't, they don't give you like what's on the exam or anything like that. And then the exam comes and somehow you're just supposed to know, okay? Guys, that's kind of how this is. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We get this and, you know, at the time they had apostles and stuff like that where, where they were going and they were feeding the sheep. This is why we have pastors. But the pastors nowadays are too worried about packing in their churches. And you know, it's just there's a lot of phony balonies out there now. OK, so I'm going to teach you how to do this for yourself. I had to learn this. But once I did, it's what really gave my walk success, okay? Here's the trick, okay? Every time you see something in Scripture, you turn it into a prayer. In fact, I wrote a prayer based off of the, uh, the Beatitudes, and I'll drop it after this video on my community page. You should go look at it. It's a really good prayer. Jesus addresses all of these things, and what it does is it turns all these things he addresses into a prayer, okay? But when I read scripture, that's what I do. I look for the successful things, and I pray for that. And I say, Father, do whatever it takes to get that, right? And then I look at the things that, like, where people don't have success, and, like, I cast it off. I, I ask him to do whatever it takes to not have that. That's how easy it is. It's like you're working out with God what you want to be, right? And if it's in agreement with God's word, his answers are yes and amen. That's just the case, okay? So 
that's how this works. Um, so I went all the way down, right? And I went down to like 20. Oh, here's the deal too. The moral inventory. I, I, I got people's stuff coming in. Uh, I got one, one of our followers that's like already promised to send it in and stuff like that. I had this whole thing. I, I, I did like 45 minutes of, of something on this. And the Lord would not let me post it. It sat there and loaded for a day. And I was getting all frustrated. And then finally, I just kept asking. I'm like, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? And then like, finally he answered. He said, rip it up, Noah. And I said, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I like that better anyways, right? <clears throat> I want you guys to take that moral inventory, acknowledge it before the Father, and then rip it up. Okay. The most important thing is like when you go to the things of like fears and stuff like that, you got to ask yourself, why? Why are you having this? What's going on, right? If you have like an unhealthy fear of death, why am I fearing death? Um, are you fearing the way you're going to die or are you fearing actual death? And if you're fearing actual death, you need to just pray that out with the Father. Just say, get to the root of this thing because you say in the word that death has lost its sting right that shouldn't be this shouldn't be an issue if you have a hard time with people uh with 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 the grieving process what it really is is a form of control i'm seeing that right now it's a form of control okay you're not trusting god and and then that's just a deeper issue of your trust level with god okay that's what you really need to work on right if, if, if when you're grieving, you're not able to grieve in the proper manner, it's because you don't actually trust God, that he's good, that he's gracious, that, he, that he'll find a way to, to and, and he's just too, like, and, and, and that everything he says is, is righteous and pure and true. And if these are the things and you're really trying to seek the Lord, you got to get that out of your mind, right? Because he is, I'm telling you, he is, I've. I know him. It took me a long time to get there. It took me years to get there of walking with him. But I remember, you know, sitting in the rehab and there was like a thing there. And I had this like vision of like a, a pearl. And like, I was like, whoa, what? And then I like got up and I had that book, The Shack, sitting next to me. <clears throat> Somebody had given it to me to read. I never read the whole thing. I just kind of turned to whatever page. But it just, and, and right then... I got the impression, like, go, go open that. And I did. And he says, it takes time to trust me. That's what it is. You got to build your trust. But you got to understand that he's there and he's for you. And everything he does is for your own good. When you understand God's on your side, then you understand, if God be for me, who can be against me? Nobody. Okay? So that's that's how this works, guys. I don't know why I went off on that little thing. But I want you guys to grieve properly. Okay? Um, because he's good and we don't uh, here's the other thing we don't know who's going to be in heaven and who's not we just don't man. there's going to be a bunch of people who think they're getting there and they're not getting there and a bunch of people who you're like wait what like they're here like what <laughs> like, you know, like no no and it's like yeah yeah they're there right they made their peace with God okay um, that's just how it's going to be guys. Okay. Um, go moving back to this though. Okay. So I want you to take that. I'm going to pray a prayer to release you guys of all of that stuff. And then we're just going to, that's how it's going to do. Derek Prince used to do this all the time. A lot like, uh, I was taught, here's the other thing the Lord told me. I went through a long deliverance process and I learned this thing very methodically, right? And that's what I was going to kind of try to do. But he's like, no, I want you to rip it up. He wouldn't let me post it. He's like, I don't want that anymore. Like, he's like, I want, basically he told me, he just wants people to acknowledge it. And then you're just getting washed with the word, right? But you need to know what to acknowledge. That's the most important thing. If you don't know what's sin and what's not, like, taking a like playing with a Ouija board when you're eight years old like you need to know these things 
he needed to know, like, God, I'm sorry for every one of these bad movies that I used to watch, right? I, I watched some movies back in the day that were so bad, like, uh, just bad, like, independent films. There was one that was creepy, man. It was called Antichrist with Willem Dafoe. Ugh. Right? Like, I had to repent and renounce that. That's how that works. Like, those things, like, that you're never going to take part in again, you need to repent and renounce it. He may be showing you a couple things, like some movies, some songs, things like that. Anytime that comes up, you just say, Father, forgive me. I renounce that. I command any spirit to go now associated with that in Jesus' name. Okay? That's how that works. Father, we come before you. I'm praying that prayer to release you guys. They acknowledge all of these sins before you, Father God. Your word says if we confess our sins one to another and pray for forgiveness, a prayer of forgiveness will heal us, God. So right now, we just ask you to lift every single curse that you justly placed upon us because of any of that stuff. We command it to go. Command every unclean spirit to go now. Release them of all of that trauma, anger, anything like that. Wash them clean with the blood of Jesus. Help them move forward and start a new day in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, we cast out deviancy in Jesus' name. Cast out anything, any kind of deviant behavior <coughs> in Jesus' name. Command it to go. Pluck it out, Father God, in Jesus' name. By the root, we don't want that. Uh, Tool, there's some, somebody who was listening to Tool or something like that. I heard Tool, uh, Enema, okay, the, the, the album. Just renounce that stuff, man. I really liked Tool back in the day too, but it's not it's not good, man. Those guys are Luciferian. They're not good, okay? You gotta, you gotta get rid of it. It's like what I said uh, yesterday about the stones. Like, you just can't, you can't do it, man. You gotta choose. Choose this day whom you're gonna serve. So we renounce any fellowship with Tool or that music. And this is for somebody on here. I've already done this in my my house or with me. I had to go through the same thing. So I hope you don't feel like you get singled out. Don't let the enemy do that. But we renounce anything with uh, Tool, Anima. We cut soul ties with that music. And God, we won't pick it up again. In Jesus' name, amen. That's how it works, guys. Play this stuff over and over again, how we do, how, how we just prayed that out, okay? So you kind of understand. But all of this stuff, all of your dirt, all of that other stuff, he wants you to rip it up, okay? Now it's about getting washed in the word. And that's why he had me in, in Mark 4, okay? was He wants you to get washed in the word. You need to feed on the word so that there's no room for this stuff, right? There's no room for this stuff to come back in. Okay, he said to me a while ago, I said, God, how do you, when you kick these spirits out of your house, like, how do you, how do you keep it from coming back in? He said, you move in. Okay. And the only way you move in is you start to understand who the real you is. And if you understand who the real you is, who he created you to be, not who the cheesy, phony church folks say you're supposed to be, because you're not, you don't have to be like that. But the real you, the authentic you, the beta version, the parts that God loves, because there's parts that, of you that before you came to the Lord that he loves, okay? And I and I don't care what anybody says. That's the truth, right? There's parts that he, there's good things in, in people. It's just you're just deciding which one you're going to go with. Go with God. Go with the good things, okay? All right. Here's the parable of the sowers, okay? Now, look, anytime you see this, the sower sows the words. These are the ones that went by the wayside. When they hear Satan, comes immediately and takes away the word that is sown in their hearts. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. <coughs> and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when they when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Guys, here's the test. I'm, I'm giving you the rubric to pass Jesus' test, okay? This is the study material. I'm giving you the rubric on how to study it. This is what you do. You say whatever 
whatever it takes to make me return, return fruit a hundredfold for the kingdom. That's what I want. That's how you pray this out. If you go all the way down here, these are tests. These are different levels. He's saying, so let me, let me, let me, let me use this allegorically, or uh, let me use this uh, parable to explain a parable, okay? He says, these likewise are the stony ground. So they're stony ground, right? And they have no root in themselves. They only endure for a time. Now there's one stone among the thorns, the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches and desires for uh, desires for other things entering in choke the word, then it becomes unfruitful. These are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some 30-fold, 100-fold, uh, 60-fold, 100-fold. Guys, this is like freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. Okay, that's that. These are like different levels that you're gonna like. Once you pass that first test, you're gonna come under that second test, and that second test is gonna be okay. So he got blessed for a little bit because this literally happened to me, and this is how I know. Okay, when I first came to the Lord, it was like boom, you get blessings and all this other stuff, and then these things come in to try to uh, persecution comes in, you get you get. You know, you get into fights with people because now you're a Christian and they don't, you know, they're like, what happened? And, they, you know, they don't want you to be a Christian because, you know, they're still stuck in their sins and stuff. And they're losing a friend, too. They just, they're met, like, it's not healthy, right? So that's how this works. So then once you pass that test, then it's like, boom, then you get surrounded by all these things. It says the, the weeds come in, right? So these are different levels of the test. You're literally going to go through all of this and you're only going to see the next thing in the test when you pass the first one. Okay, that's how this works. And guess what? You'll continue to circle the mountain over and over and over again until you pass the first test. And then you move on to the second stage and then you, and then, and then you circle the mountain, circle the mountain, circle the mountain. And then you, okay, here's what's crazy. I was writing this down and he's, yeah, 13 and there's different levels of tests, right? I was writing this down. If you go down to 24 and 25, where's that at? Right there. Take heed what you hear with the same measure you use, it will be measured unto you. And to you who hear, more will be given. More whoever has, for whoever has to him, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from them. I saw immediately two men that I know. The one was my old neighbor. Uh, he was my buddy. I, I liked the guy. He was funny and stuff like that. He literally said he wouldn't read the Bible because he didn't want to learn more. Because he didn't want to be responsible for more. Okay? That, you're playing with God at that point. Like, we just read in First Peter 4 yesterday that if... If we're scarcely saved, if we're barely saved, what's going to happen in the world, right? Dude, like you're 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 playing with a loaded gun, man. You're a toddler playing with a loaded gun. That's not okay, right? You, you can't do that because what's going to happen? It says it right here. He says, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him, okay? I wrote this down. I didn't even know this was in the same chapter because I was just reading from the top of whatever the Lord told me to turn to. And then four lines down, what I wrote is the parable that he went he went into, right? And that was the, the mustard seed growth. I was like, this is like a mustard seed growth, right? Like, it just came to my mind. I was like, your faith is as a mustard seed and the more you have, the more will be given. So you're you're supposed to diligently seek out the good things of God, giftings, love, uh, opportunities. Like, you're, guys, we're not. I just heard that right right there. Opportunities. Why are you sitting on opportunities? What what? Look, if you're in the world and you don't know God, yes, you should be afraid. You shouldn't. You should not. You you should you shouldn't shouldn't do that but god catches us and if it's something that's going to glorify his name you lift it up to him and you really try to seek and honor his will i'm telling you those opportunities even when they fail even when they go bust it's going to be something good 
Okay, so don't ever let that scare you away. It's such a freeing way to live. I don't live fearful. I could pick up my stuff and move to Alabama tomorrow. And I wouldn't think twice about it. I wouldn't be afraid. I'd be like, yeah, what's next? Cool, right? That's how I live. Every single day, that's how I live. How cool is that? It's like real life Forrest Gump, except I'm not, you know, stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> like, you know, like, that's cool, man. That's a way that everybody's supposed to live. This is This is how life is supposed to be done. But fear keeps us bogged down. You got to get to the root of that fear. And it really comes from a place of not trusting God, okay? Uh, but yeah, that, that guy, my neighbor, not, he you know, he didn't want more. And then, so everything that he does have is going to get taken from him and he's going to be stagnant and, and done. There was a guy, he told me something. I am not going to drop his name. The Lord told me something. It's really sad, man. I, he was a buddy of mine, man. He was in recovery, all this other stuff. He was spirit-filled. He could speak in tongues. And he could never get it together. He could never get it together. And the Lord gave it to me because it was a warning. It was like a warning that like he didn't have anything to live for. Or, or that he thought he did have stuff to live for. He just didn't. He didn't. He lost hope, guys. And it's like a dream deferred. Like a little raisin in the sun or whatever, you know. He lost hope, man, and he didn't, because he didn't have hope, he didn't have the fight to get through whatever he had to face. We're not supposed to have hope in this world. We're supposed to have hope in eternal life and salvation, and you got to understand there's a, there's a, a balance beam that you're walking. But you need to get and cleave on to the good things that God wants you to have. There's good things that God has for you for your life. And then this is this is probably for me too, right? That like we got to want more. Not more of the unhealthy stuff, but more of seeing what God has to offer us. We want nothing less than his best for our life. Father, right now we renounce any time we've settled. We want nothing but the best for our life. Redeem the time that we have left. Show us what you can do. Move on us. In Jesus' name. I just felt something big come off there. Somebody, somebody's going to see God move. And now wait in hopeful expectation to read the word. Okay? You need to be growing in giftings. He was showing me, like, even my wife. Like, my wife and I walked this walk together. She didn't want to pray in tongues for a long time. And then once she did, she felt stupid, right? The enemy kept her back from that. And then, like, I got the interpretation. And I was like, you just said blah, 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 blah. She's like, all I hear is hissing sounds, right? She was like, but it's like, I'm like, no, you just said this. And she prayed in tongues. And that's what she said, right? And the gift of interpretation, like, pray for that. Ask God to give it to you. He gave it to me, right? And it's a good one, man, because here's the thing. When somebody like that, like my wife, whose confidence is being attacked by the enemy, most people get attacked like that when they start praying in tongues. Like, you're not really doing it. You look stupid. Uh, or, or this is demonic. That's how the enemy came to me. This is demonic or whatever, right? And you got to push through that. And the reason is, is that thing is a nuclear weapon. You're praying a Holy Spirit prayer through you that confuses the enemy camp because they don't know what you're saying. It's only between you and the Father. And that's it, right? She's grown in all these giftings. Like now she's prophesying. She's getting dreams. She's getting all of this stuff, right? If you're not growing and there's not new things happening in your life and you're not doing that, that means God has taken this stuff away from you. Fall on your knees and repent. He's good. He will bring it back if you ask for it. Say, do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm not one of these men that even what little I do have will be taken from me. I want more. Help me get more. Help me get back on track. And these are the prayers. It's never too late. It's never too late. God is good. Okay? God bless you guys. These are like, 
this is this is how you're going to be successful in your walk. You've already confessed all that stuff. You're a new person, a new creation in Christ. It's all done. It's gone. It's ripped up. He cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. If the enemy ever tries to remind you of any of that stuff that you've done, I'm telling you as a representative of the kingdom of heaven, it's done. It's squashed and he has no right to ever come in and and torment God's children anymore. Okay, thus saith the Lord, it's done. Put it away. Okay, and you you tell him, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Whenever that thing comes in to try to torment you or make you feel bad about you confessed it. And if it's gone and it's out there, it's as far as the east is from the west, and God doesn't remember it anymore. Okay? That's the enemy. God bless you guys. Have